And that gave Charlie Fulton the advantage, and he's using it now. Rufus Jones is in there, and he's going, no, the referee's not going to let him take over. He's not going to let him stay and help his partner in any way. And both Maine and Fulton now are double-teaming George Gulas. The referee counting to make them break it up, and it's Fulton who stays in the ring, and George Gulas rolled him across the ring, but look out. Fulton reaches out, rather Maine reaches out, gets a handful of his trunks, and pulls him back. I believe George was trying to make the tag that time. Might have made it. Maine in there again. George gets the range on both of them. Swinging that big right haymaker. And now the tag to Rufus Jones. Head on like two runaway steam engines. Big Rufus R. Jones, 275 pounds, trying to wrap it up here if he can. Sir Clement and George Gillis about to get into it on the far corner of the ring. Referee sending George back to his corner, and that gives the other side of the team, Bobby Maine, an opportunity to come in to get Rufus Jones uh, sort of a little mixed up here and on the defensive, and that's what he is, and look out! Bobby Maine with a bombs away from the top rope, couldn't do it. One, two, three, that's it! The winners, George Gullis and Rufus R. Jones. In a no time limit, no disqualification match, they have defeated Bobby Maine and Charlie Fulton, but Sir Clement is in there with his umbrella. Out on the floor goes Rufus R. Jones, and they're going to work George Goulas over. Sir Clement jabbing at him with that umbrella, as I believe that's Charlie Fulton holding. Holding, I can't see with that blonde hair all over his face, I can't see too much of him. The other man is out on the floor with Jones. Yes, that's Bobby Main in the ring. Now Fulton's back in there, and they have Jones bleeding. I can see some blood on the head of Rufus R. Jones on his face. Sir Clement working on George Gulas, and they've opened the gash, blood flowing down the face of Rufus R. Jones. George Gulas goes down on the floor. Jones reaches up, sees his own blood on his hand. Look at that, he sees his own blood running down his hands and he doesn't like it. That upsets him, he doesn't like it at all. George Gullis has the umbrella from Sir Clement and he is really pasting him with it. There's the referee holding their hands up to winners, Rufus R. Jones and George Gullis as a defeated team, led by their manager, Sir Clement, head for the dressing room. Jackie Fargo is down on the canvas. His opponent, Jerry Lawler, is down on the canvas, and the referee is counting. Who will get up first? What a match this one has been so far. A tag, or rather a championship match. NWA Southern Junior Heavyweight title riding on the line. Lawler has it. Fargo wants it. Revenge for Jackie Fargo against the man who broke several bones and forced him out of action for three or four months. It means a lot to both men. And both men are putting it all on the line right here tonight in a rugged effort to overcome the efforts of the other. Right now, Jerry Lawler seems to have the oath. It's been a seesaw battle. First Fargo is ahead, then Lawler ahead. And not to mention the fact that Ricky Gibson and Sam Bass have had several set twos of their own. Ricky Gibson is in the corner of Jackie Fargo as his second. And of course, Sam Bass is the manager of Jerry Lawler. In fact, you see Gibson in determined pursuit of Sam Bass at the moment. Sam has managed to elude him so far. Ricky trying to cut him off going through the ring. Lawler and Fargo look out off the top rope when Gibson. Sam Bass moved away from him. Lawler working again on Fargo twice with that strong right hand that he can throw. Jackie has also been very effective with his punches. It's been a battle that has seen first one man, then the other ahead, and it could finish at any time with one man the winner or the other. Whichever man can get that big count of three, and either man certainly is capable of winning this one. Off the ropes drives Fargo, caught him with that elbow smash. Right on top of him. May have something here, one, two, and Jackie still has enough left to roll him off. It was doubtful for a moment. It looked like that might be it. 
but the fabulous one is still Jackie Fargo, and he had enough snap back to roll all around. Caught him with a knee to the head that time. Lola felt that one. You see him holding the top of his head. It sort of uh, shook him a little bit. Now Jackie slams him with that right hand, and the tide has shifted back to Fargo's direction. But the question is, which man can get that big count of three? And Ratham Bass. And Jackie pops him. Now Ricky Gibson is in there working on him. But wait a minute. Lawler is up to step on a powder. Could it be talcum powder? Whatever it was, a cloud of white dust. Completely blinded Jackie Fargo. He didn't know what to do. Lawler came up with a handful of what must have been face powder or something. A white cloud suddenly enveloped Jackie Fargo. Jackie's face is completely white. All I can think is that it must have been some sort of face powder. Jackie's face is just as white as a sheet. He can't see. He was helpless. Lola has been given the belt by the referee. Now the referee's talking to Sam Bass. People have crowded around the ring. Ricky Gibson getting a towel to get some of the substance, whatever it is, off of Fargo's face. He still has a lot of white, uh, apparently powder. That's all I can think that it would be. Ricky Gibson talking to the crowd. The referee is now asking questions to Sam Bass and Jerry Lawler, although what good it will do, I don't know. He's lifted Lawler's arm and handed him the belt. Fargo is still helpless. I don't think he can see a thing. He's still on the floor. Boy, he got a wad of whatever it was right square in his eyes. A blinding flash of white, a cloud of white dust, apparently white talcum powder or face powder. And boy, he really let fly a handful of it. 